So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending the Department of Justice Studies information session for our Criminology Master of Science program. My name is Bryce Westlake and I'm the coordinator for the program. Today, I'll take some time to introduce our department, tell you a bit about the aims and objectives of our master's program, the degree and admission requirements, and the various funding opportunities to pay for the program. I then have two current students, Ira and Karina, who will tell you a bit more about the program from a student's perspective. Finally, there will be, a time, uh, there will be time at the end of the session to answer any questions that you have. Feel free to put those in the, into the chat, and as the session goes along, we'll review them and I'll answer all of them before the end, uh, before we close. So let's get started. So the Department of Justice Studies at San Jose University was founded in 1930 and is the oldest degree granting program in the United States. We embrace an international and interdisciplinary approach to engage students in critical analysis of justice systems in practice, policy, and research. We equip students to be leaders, professionals, and agents of change in justice-related institutions, diverse local and global communities. Our foremost desire is to foster just societies. We value intellectual curiosity, lifelong learning, honesty, fairness, and ethical considerations of our actions. We embrace diversity, inclusion, civility, and sustainable practices as foundations for strong communities. We commit ourselves to promoting global understandings and respect for cultural differences, and we honor our relationship with students, colleagues, my and community partners who we work with to achieve our mission. To accomplish, accomplish this, our department is built on five complementary pillars, criminal justice studies, criminology, forensic science, legal studies, and human rights. As a result, we have a very diverse teaching faculty and research agenda. Some of these include reentry, human trafficking, politics of terrorism, crime in the Caribbean, criminalization of immigrants, policing, communities of color, cybercrime, forensic anthropology, juvenile delinquency, program evaluation, critical legal studies, and theories of punishment and control. So now I've given you a little bit of background about our department. Let's move on to our master's program. The Department of Justice Studies offers two master's degrees. The first is our Master of Science in Justice Studies. This program is entirely in person. The second, which we are here to talk about today, is the Master of Science in Criminology with a concentration in global criminology. In contrast to the Justice Studies Masters, this program is entirely online. The online master's program aims to equip graduates with a truly global outlook on crime and criminal justice. We believe that the globalization that has occurred necessitates that even at the local and state levels, crime is influenced by what happens nationally and internationally. Therefore, our program uniquely combines advanced studies of, uh, of contemporary issues in international crime and the various responses to these crimes around the globe with the analytical and research techniques used by advanced scholars to examine these issues. The international lens is reflected in the required courses for the program, which I will touch on in more detail shortly. We have five program learning outcomes for the MS Criminology program with the aim for students to acquire the following skills upon graduation. One, describe ways to create social change through a critical understanding of the local and global dimensions of crime. Two, articulate and evaluate scholarly grounded perspectives on issues of crime and justice, including ways that criminology explains crime and reactions to crime through academic, professional, and social media realms. Three, Explain theories, assumptions, foundational knowledge, analytical and interpretive protocols, tools, and technologies within the field of criminology. Four, 
demonstrate skills in each step of an investigative, creative, or practical project that helps advance understandings of a criminological or related issue. And five, employ global perspectives on criminology and concepts of justice to support research informed solutions to contemporary social problems. The MS Criminology Program is classified as a special sessions program. Special sessions programs are not funded by the state of California. Instead, they are supported by fees based on the cost of delivering the courses. This means that tuition is on a per course basis. The advantage of this is that students are not required to pay the SJSU campus fees that regular session students who would normally be accessing student services on campus are required to pay. Our master's degree is a two year or more accurately 21 month program. Our program is unique in that students take one course at a time. This allows students to focus on one course and not worry about conflicting assignment deadlines across courses. More importantly, many of our students are working full time. Having one course at a time combined with no scheduled meeting times for classes makes it easier for our students to balance their schedule. Under this structure, students take two courses per semester, one course for the first eight weeks of the semester and another course for the second eight weeks of the semester. In total, there are 10 courses students need to complete. There are the five courses that are a part of the core, four courses in the global criminology concentration, and one course which serves as the culminating experience. We will now go over what the schedule would look like. As previously discussed, our courses provide an international comparative curriculum that develops analytical skills, understanding of legal concepts, theoretical competency, and abilities to apply criminology in practical ways. In your first year, you take courses all year round. If you were to begin in the fall semester, the first eight weeks of the semester, you would take JS 265, Comparative Criminal Justice Systems. For the second eight weeks, you would take JS 266, Applied Research Methods and Statistics. In spring, you would take JS 273 and JS 267. In the summer, you would take two five-week courses instead of the traditional eight, which would be JS 269, Cyber Forensics, and JS 270A, Global Terrorism. If you were to start the program in spring, then you would begin with JS 273 and 267, and you'd take 265 and 266 in the following fall. In the second year, you have JS 271 and 272 in the fall, and JS 274 and 268 in the spring. <coughs> JS 274 is the culminating experience course, which requires students to develop, conduct, analyze, and report on a research topic related to global criminology. This is a very intense and demanding course, especially given the eight week timeframe. Again, if you were to start in spring, you would take the regular spring courses, but then have a break over the summer and finish your degree in fall with JS 271 and 272. It is worth noting that each of these courses are offered once a year in the same order. This means that if you need to retake a course or you elect to not take a course, you will have to wait until the following year at the same time to complete the course. The con of this is that it can delay your graduation. The pro is that the schedule is consistent, so you know when the course will be offered and can plan accordingly well in advance. Next, we will cover admission requirements. Currently, students are required to have a bachelor's degree from an accredited four-year university or college. If your degree was completed at a university outside the United States, you are also required to submit a TOEFL exam score. Regardless to where your degree was completed, you are required to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher over your last 60 semester units or 90 quarter units, and a GPA of 3.0 or higher in your major specifically. Starting in spring 2023, the admission requirements will be increasing. 
In addition to the current requirements, students will need to submit a resume with their application, highlighting their academic background, achievements and awards, professional accomplishments, and relative experience, for example, through internships, volunteer work, or employment. Students will also need to submit a statement of interest between 1,000 and 1,250 words. The statement will describe your background experiences and motivations for pursuing an MS criminology degree, your areas of academic and research interests in criminology, why a global perspective to criminology is needed, and a brief description of a potential culminating research project. Finally, students will submit contact information for two references. If students want, they are welcome to submit letters of reference with their application. The application process is fairly straightforward. You go to the Cal State Applies website. The URL is on the slide. Once there, you apply to the CSU. Once you've done that, you will apply to the MS Criminology Program from the same website. Once your application is complete, you will submit your official transcript to SJSU. The deadline to apply for fall is July 1st, while the deadline for spring is December 1st. Applications are reviewed periodically prior to the deadline, with admissions being provided prior to the deadline if you submit early. Each course costs $1,800, with the degree total being $18,000. Tuition is due 21 days from registration for spring and fall, and 15 days from registration in summer. While you only take one course at a time during the semester, you need to register and pay for both courses at the beginning of the semester. There are various financial aid options available to students in the form of scholarships, assistantships, loans, and work study. For loans and work study, we recommend you go to the Federal Student Aid website. The link is provided on the slide. Both the university and college provide various scholarship opportunities. At the university level, three prominent scholarships are the Bertha Kong, with six awards for $6,500 each, the Graduate Equity Fellowship, which ranges from $1,000 to $4,000, and the Sally Casanova Predoctoral Scholarship, which is focused on providing students with support who are intending to apply to a doctoral program in the CSU after completing their master's degree. I apologize in the UC system, not the CSU. At the bottom of this slide are links to the university scholarship page where you can find out more details about the three scholarships I noted, along with other scholarships. I have also included the College of Social Sciences scholarship resources webpage as well, which outlines the opportunities available to students in our college. You can also find this information by Googling SJSU scholarships and SJSU College of Social Sciences scholarships. Finally, we have departmental scholarships with applications be accepted between March 1st and early April. Beyond scholarships, we typically hire two graduate assistants in fall and spring. In these positions, students work 20 hours a week with several faculty members, assisting with teaching, research, and any other work required. Applications for assistantships are usually sent out by the Justice Studies Graduate Coordinator just prior to the start of the semester. The international lens of our program provides the foundation to be successful in a variety of fields related to criminal justice. Our graduates have taken positions in police administration, probation, corrections, and federal law enforcement. They've also worked for nonprofits, local and state government, public safety, social services, victim advocacy, and security management. Our graduates can also further their academic careers, continuing to law school or doctoral programs, or becoming an instructor at a community college or university. I now want to turn the floor over to the two second year graduate students, Myra and Karina, who will tell you a bit more about their experiences in the program. Hi everyone, my name is Myra. Um, I am on my last semester, meaning the last course for the Global Criminology Program at SJSU. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of information that you should take into consideration if you are really interested in this program. Um, 
it is a self-guided program. There is no professor like babysitting you, making sure that you're on top of your work. So you're pretty much responsible to making sure that you're doing the readings. All the readings that they are provided, they're given to you for a reason. They're not there just so you can look at them and then just put them aside. Um, they're all based on the assignments. So it is very essential that you do the readings and read the prompts correctly. If you don't understand assignments, make sure that you're always asking questions. One of the biggest, biggest, biggest advice that we do provide, Karina and I, is lean on your cohort. You know, basically reach out to someone. The way that we were able to connect with um, what our cohort was basically, um, when we do our introductions to the course, like introduce yourself and like kind of icebreaker, you're going to be able to see who you're well matched with. Um, I have two kids and I've worked nine hours a week. I mean, nine hours a day. So there is st students that have no kids. So they don't understand this pressure that you're in. So <clears throat> personal life is very important while you're doing this program too, because you have to find ways to find time for you to read, to do the assignments, and also provide kind of like the attention that your family needs. Um, that's why, like I said, lean on your cohort because if there was times that I missed deadlines, but, but my classmates knew the deadlines, like for example, Karina will be like, hey, like today this assignment is due. If she wouldn't have told me, I would have missed the deadline and I would have gotten a zero. If you miss one assignment, it reflects, it gives you, yeah, it reflects on your grade a lot. Like those assignments really are, yeah, they're gold. If you don't submit them, it you could be at an A plus and you could all of a sudden drop to a C. So make sure that you are on top of it. One of the biggest things that helped me was a planner. I planned out all the assignments, the deadlines, made sure that I also planned my personal life in there because like I said, it's a balance, um, it's especially if you have children. And I believe Karina could give you more information on that since she's a stay-at-home mom. And even though we're both, one of them's working, one is a stay-at-home mom, like we have to find the balance. It doesn't matter if you're, if, if, it, if you're working or not, it's a very exhausting program. But I will not say, I will not say that like, I regret it. I do not regret taking it and I'll take it once again, all over again, because I was able to learn what I'm capable of. Um, I was able to, you know, I mastered every, every course. I was able to learn something new. And like I said, like, like I do not regret it and I will never regret it. It's, it's the best thing that has happened to me. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I am proud of my cohort because now we're at the, at the end and it's, now we look back and it's like, man, those tears were worth it. Those Red Bulls and coffees and all-nighters and all that reading we did, it's worth it because now you're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but one thing, like I said, your cohort is, it's going to be the key for you to succeed in this program because alone, um, no, it's going to be impossible. Every professor is different. Um, they have different ways of explaining things and different ways of how they want things, even though discussions could be similar to a different course, but the discussions for, say for right now, for immigration, it's a critique. We are used to a discussion where we read an assignment, we explain what the reading was about, and we go from there and provide personal um, experiences. In this case, we're critiquing the actual reading and then providing feedback with additional resources. So every professor is different and every discussion, every assignment is gonna look similar, but they're very different criteria for each one. So I don't know if Karina wants to add on. Hi, Hi I'm Karina. Um, I am also, we are just shy of graduation, Myra and I, and it's been a long and wonderful two years. Um, I went ahead and started two categories on why this program would be essential for you. And I came down to, you can't knock the convenience of a completely online program. Um, for example, I know Myra lives in Santa Clara County, but I live in Fresno County. 
So that's a three hour drive from San Jose. And um, I have three children, uh, seven, four, I'm sorry, seven, three and two. So having to find a balance between going to school and having the kids, this program is essential because yes, you need to prioritize your assignments, of course, but it's so convenient that you can plan those around your schedule. But at the same time, I know we always say time management is important and it is, but I believe that time management does come down to what works best for you. And time management, in my opinion, if you find yourself to be more productive between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., do that. If you find yourself productive at 10 p.m. to, to 12 a.m., that's what you need to do. I mean, obviously, you're going to probably have more hours, but if you need to take those breaks, you have to give yourself time because if you crunch everything at the end, you're going to miss some things. You're going to you're going to overwhelm yourself. So pace it to where you can handle it. And I believe this program does offer you the opportunity to pace yourself. It is I self-guided, but I, and, and personally with myself, the first course that I took, it was, I felt like I was way in over my head and I said, I have to reach out to someone and I can be pretty shy, but one day I just looked at the, at the discussions and I said, I think I would mesh well with Myra. And I messaged, I emailed her and I let her know, hey, I'm sorry, maybe this is weird, but can you help me figure out what class I'm supposed to take next? And we've spoken every day since for the past two years. So I'll, I don't know if Professor Westlake knows that, but we're pretty much best friends. <laughs> and um, so you can't knock the location. Uh, it definitely helps. And compared to a lot of programs in my area, this program, I am personally, I believe it's pretty affordable. Um, it can, and that, you know, financial, it, sometimes it comes down to financial. Aid. I can't remember the name of the student fee that you're given, but always apply for financial aid. If you use it in your undergraduate, I would recommend that you apply for it now. It may not pay for the degree itself, but sometimes you'll get um, like an extra two weeks to pay for your tuition, which I had during my, my two years. And sometimes you need an extra two weeks to come up with an extra couple hundred dollars. So definitely use that. Don't think that just because you don't qualify, you should always try applying for financial aid. Um, another thing is um, I highlighted a few things that I think would help you succeed in this program. And of course, um, you know, taking it back to what Myra says, you have to connect with your cohort. Um, maybe I'm not, you might not be the entire cohort, but finding the diamond in the rough is going to help you stay sane and make it through this program because it is, it's mentally exhausting. You're going to take a lot of time away from your family, but having someone there that knows your exact schedule already, where you don't have to explain yourself, but well, sorry, I didn't get to write back. Sorry, I couldn't make it. Sorry, I can't go this weekend. I'll have to cancel our plans knowing that Myra knew my schedule it was a burden off of my shoulders because she knew that you know we'd, we'd have our crying sessions together but they're worth it <laughs> and then um as especially with just recently we started doing google meets where we do our assignments google meet and we're working as if we're not we're in the room with each other and i'll have a question i'll shout it out and she'll shout back an answer and we just keep going so something like that is very helpful. A second thing that I would, um, that was really important to me is you'll go through a plethora of peer review process with your classmates. And at first it was really hard to take that constructive criticism, especially if I wasn't used to it so often. I mean, this is weekly. You're gonna deal with this weekly. Um, you're going to need to, don't let any of that reflect on your, don't think of it as a failure. It's not. It's truly meant to help you. And at the end of this program, you're going to want people to give you more, more, more feedback. You want that feedback because how else are you going to get better if you're, if you're not? And the same way you got it, you have to dish out the feedback. The good thing about your peer reviews is they're going to be anonymous. So, but by the end of the, the course, you're going to understand everyone's writing style and you're going to know who's who. And, but at that point, you're going to be so comfortable with each other that it's, it's not going to matter and you're going to get there and you have to, of course, it, maybe it sounds silly. You have to stay positive. Don't be afraid to reach out to anyone because there's going to be someone out there that's probably just like you. They're going through the same thing. They may have a whole family to take care of. They're maybe they're working one or two jobs. Don't get discouraged. You, 
you're going to make it. And I think that this is a great program. Honestly, it was challenging. Of course, it was every teacher, every, I'm sorry, every instructor is going to be different and you are going to have to learn to adapt, but you're going to learn so many things from each of them. And you're going to take that and you're going to apply that to your professional career. But yeah, just to add on to what Karina said, like, don't feel offended when you get your peer reviews because there was a time that I went to Karina. I'm like, oh my gosh, she got offended because of, I used the wrong term. But, you know, it's a way for you to understand that sometimes the terminology that we use in undergrad, it's not the same in graduate school. And you have to provide a definition as to why you're using that terminology or why you use that phrase. Um, one of the biggest things as well is always go back to your professors and be like, I got this peer review. Is there a way you could provide me additional information on what I could like, you know, make changes to my paper? Because it's, it's very essential. Like it's very important that you understand that they're there to help you um, improve your writing. And if you're a person like for myself, I have a hard time coming up with other words than just because or however, or moreover, you have to think outside the box. So these courses are meant for you to critically think and add more. And I know in our apply project, I remember Bryce will always tell me like, add more literature. Add, I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I'm repeating myself where I'm, I don't know what else to add, but it's not, you're, you're not repeating yourself. It's just making sure that you're critically thinking what other people will ask themselves like, okay, like if this, if you said this, but what about this? So you always have to think outside the box, take that criticism and, and you know, appreciate it because it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be your golden ticket to that apply project and, and for future, if you're deciding to go into a PhD program, it's gonna be essential. Um, what else can I add? Like, you know, it's okay to cry and have your mental breakdowns because it, it, it's meant to be. It, it's exhausting. Um, you will cry with your kids at the same time. <laughs> I know I did um, because I had to help them with homework. I have a 12 year old and a seven year old. So it's like, they're trying to figure out why are you so busy and not able to provide them the attention they need. Another thing, your partner, if you have a partner, make sure they're hundred percent with you on this program because it, it is very important that you have their support and their understanding that you're not gonna be able to attend family functions because your education is more important. Um, another thing was don't feel discouraged when you start figuring out that some of your classmates have dropped out of the, the course or the program. I did see, we did see a lot of that. <clears throat> don't take breaks, just go through it because each course is meant, it's it's built to work on the next course. It's it just gets harder, nothing's gonna get easier. So they're developed for the next course. So for example, I was, I, I barely understood why we have methods and statistics class, um, course, but it was because for applied project, we had to do a research. And then I was like, Karina, um, this sounds familiar. So we had to go back in time and be like, oh, this assignment, we did it. Like, this is how he wants it. This is how we're, we should apply it to our applied project. So make sure that all the work that you do, everything that your professors give you, you, you save it because you're gonna go back to that and that those um, anonymous peer reviews, they're gonna come in handy. Thank you to both of you for, for sharing some of your experiences. Um, as they noted, the program is, is self-directed, but it also, that doesn't mean that you do the program alone. So one of the things that occurs with us doing courses in, at the specific times is that you will end up having the same students in each one of your classes. And so we very much encourage, as, as Myra and Karina pointed out, to connect with people in your cohort because you will be spending the next two years with them. So you will get to know them quite well. And it, it's something that we like to emphasize because when students hear that there's no scheduled meeting times and that it's all online, it can potentially feel isolating or, or that you're doing the degree on your own. And it's important to recognize that you're not. Um, one of the things that uh, most of the students seem to struggle with as well is 
uh, reaching out to faculty members. So again, while the program is very much self-directed, you have lectures with uh, readings and there's potentially videos and there's audio connected with them. It doesn't mean that your, your instructors are, are off limits, if you want to call it that, is that uh, we do encourage you to reach out to them when you do have questions. Um, and as they noted too, it's important to recognize the expectations and demands are a lot higher. Uh, if you are coming from undergrad, you will find that the amount of work and the expectations are going to be a lot higher. You also have to remember that all of the students that were the top students while you were an undergrad are now all your classmates. So you now have a only have a class of the top students. And so for the ex, uh, so therefore the expectations are going to be a lot higher. <laughs> Of course, as they noted, don't get discouraged when you start out and, and wonder uh, if you can cut it or whether you should be there. Um, I believe in my first semester of my master's, I think I was at about seven times debating whether I belonged or not. And so that is all part of it. But part of the point of this information session and, and having some current students speak to you is, is to try to give you some information or uh, knowledge about what you can expect if you come to join the program. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Um, we appreciate it and, and good luck. And I, I look forward to seeing your applications and, and admitting you to our program. <laughs>